We're going to open tonight with another look at what has been this year's biggest story, immigration. Without much real public debate or even discussion, the elite left has reached a conclusion on the question, and it's that America needs more immigration, much more immigration without limit. And we shouldn't worry about whether the people coming here have skills that we need, whether they're educated, whether they can speak English even, or even whether they're violent criminals. In fact, we shouldn't even try to accurately count how many are coming here or how many live within our borders. Do you disagree with that? Well, then, in the words of one MSNBC commentator, you're pure evil. Watch. Donald Trump, without a doubt, is pure evil. No other country in the Americas has walls. No other country in the world separates children from their parents. Pure evil. The thing about pure evil is you can't reason with it. You can't negotiate with pure evil or reach some kind of compromise with pure evil. Pure evil can only be destroyed by force. Given that, it's not surprising that the left is now mobilizing to harass, fire, and if necessary, physically attack anyone who disagrees with them on immigration because the other side is, again, pure evil. For example, after chasing DHS Secretary Kirsten Nielsen out of a restaurant earlier this week in downtown Washington, activists now showed up at her home. But zoom out for a moment. Why exactly does America need more immigration? Everybody says it does, but do we really? Does more immigration help ordinary Americans? Does it improve the country? Or does it just enrich an elite class, the policymaking class, at the expense of everyone else? Very few people are asking that question, but one who is, is Michael Anton. He just wrote a piece in the Washington Post asking, why do we need more people in this country anyway? We thought that was a good question. So we're kicking off tonight's special with Michael Anton. Michael, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Tucker. I'm very glad to be here. Well, I was grateful that you pulled back a little bit and asked the macro question that undergirds all of this. Do we really need a flow of more than a million new people into America every year? What was your conclusion? Well, my conclusion is let's look at the answers that people give for why and examine them. And they don't really bear close examination. So reason number one tends to be we need them for the for, we need workers. We have all these jobs. We need workers. And that sounds kind of plausible when we have a low unemployment rate for the first time in a long time. But remember, that low unemployment rate is an achievement of the Trump economy coming after 20 years of wage stagnation and even wage declines for working and middle class Americans. So I remember the 90s when the Clinton administration were seeking tight labor markets. And their argument was, well, if we have tight labor markets, wages are going to go up for the core Democratic constituencies, working people. Democrats don't care about that anymore because right. they're not the the party of labor anymore. They're the party of oligarchs, essentially, and they like more immigrants because they want to push wages down. So the jobs argument doesn't really hold up. Uh, another argument is people will say, well, we need more immigrants because of declining birth rates and in particular to fix Social Security or our entitlements. That doesn't really hold up because exactly. by that logic, you'd have to say, you know, Workers will always have to outnumber retirees, which means population growth forever, which means what's the upper limit on the U.S. population? We're now at over 300 million, 320, 330 million, 500 million, a billion. They don't want to answer that question. They just want to say, no, we have to keep doing what we're doing. No, no examination possible. Uh, it's, it's really kind of crazy. Honestly, Wait, that so we can't let, have let this me just pause. Let me pause you there. So when people say that we need more immigrants to float our social safety net, what they're really saying is our social safety net is a Ponzi scheme and that the people at the end of it are yeah. going to get shafted. Right. Of it's course. not sustainable well, without an endless flow of poor people. In 1967, a Nobel Prize winning economist who had not yet won the Nobel Prize, but would later and explicitly called Social Security a Ponzi scheme. And he meant it as a compliment because his assumption, this is, the, you know, the mid 60s with a booming economy and a growing population. He said, the, you know, the greatest Ponzi scheme ever devised is a growing country. So the, the assumption is the country's just going to grow forever. That, in, that includes population. I don't know about you, but I find a lot of parts of the country are pretty crowded as it is. Traffic's really bad. Uh, housing prices are right. very high. Why do we want to make it more crowded uh, housing prices more expensive, school systems more stressed. I never hear a very good or convincing answer to that. Well, I don't hear the argument actually at all. I don't hear an argument about immigration. What I hear, and you pointed this out, I thought, yeah, really well in your piece, I hear not a policy debate, but a religious argument. If you're for the side that I'm taking, you're a good yeah. person. If you're against it, you're a bad person or pure evil, as they say on MSNBC. 
Right. I, I think people, they also they try to make the point that America has been welcoming in the past um, in, Previous waves of immigration have served America well, and there's a lot of truth to that. There was a time when America yes. made humongous acquisitions of land, and uh, the, our political leaders in the past thought that they needed more people to help go settle and farm that land. That made sense. There was a time during the Industrial Revolution when factories were booming and business was expanding at a rate that exceeded the uh, ability of the present population to fill those jobs, yes. and we welcomed a lot of immigrants in, in the uh, late 19th and early 20th centuries. There's a rationale for that at those times. What's the rationale now? Those two filling up the land, that, that doesn't hold anymore. You're right. uh, the frontier was declared closed by the federal government in the late 1800s. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, wh so, where do we... Wh that you're, I mean, I think you're, you're asking the most basic question that nobody asks, and I'm really glad that you did, and I hope that your piece today sets off a national conversation on the subject. Michael Anton, thank, thank you, you for joining us. Thanks a lot. Well, instead of encouraging that conversation, which is important, I think, Democratic politicians are now pushing rhetoric that is getting more extreme by the day. New York gubernatorial candidate Cynthia Nixon recently declared, for example, that ICE is a terrorist organization. Watch this. ICE has strayed so far from its mission. Uh, it's supposed to be here to keep Americans safe, but what it's turned into is, is frankly, a terrorist uh, organization of its own. Giovanni Williams is a New York City councilman. He's running for lieutenant governor of New York State and could share a ticket potentially with Cynthia Nixon. He joins us tonight for our special. Uh, Mr. Williams, thanks a lot for coming on. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So um, let's start with I, being honest about one thing that I, I think Michael Anton is right about. We're most of the time we talk about immigration having a religious debate about who's a good person, who's a bad person. So if we could, for the next four minutes, let's keep this to policy. Sure. Tell me how bringing more immigrants into your neighborhood, I think it's East Flash, Flatbush in New York, helps the people who already live there. Immigrants and citizens, the people who are already there, how are they helped by it? Well, what I'm, I'm very proud uh, to be the son of immigrants, and I'm very proud uh, that the majority of my constituents are either immigrants or their parents are immigrants. I think that's the wrong question. The, the question many of us are asking is why do we have to use overwhelming force resources and draconian measures to rip up families for an issue that at best is akin to graffiti or a parking ticket? That's the question that we're asking. Well, but, but I'm not sure that it is, and that's why I just, I mean, and I think it's a, you're asking a fair question, but let's get to the deeper question, which is, why is our current immigration system good for the people who already live here? So if, we've de if we decide, for example, that mass immigration and mass illegal immigration hurts Americans, then it's worth being pretty tough, I would say, on the border. So why don't you explain to me why the people of East Flatbush who are dealing with overcrowded schools, who are dealing with public transportation that's falling apart, that are dealing with rising rents that are making them move, how do they benefit from more immigrants living there? Well, again, exactly. I actually still believe that uh, immigrants to, to this country have and still do benefit this country. Uh, the reason I'm trying to flip back is because even if I concede it to your argument, let's pretend that somehow it's harmful. How harmful is it? Is it worth spending Well, I'm not on actually making an argument. Sure. I'm, I'm asking you a question, which is in a very, the most simple and most basic, the, the foundational question. How does this help Americans, our people, and you don't have an answer to it? No, I think and that, I that's find that really interesting. No, don't but you? I think that's the, the that is not the foundational question. So we disagree on what the foundational question is. And so if I'm conceding, really? if for you the sake of your argument there is some harm, it is akin to writing graffiti on the wall or akin to getting a parking ticket. And so the question But you're is, not proving that, you're just stating it. No, so no, for example, saying, housing prices are a huge problem and you're a, you're a liberal, I'm a conservative, we, sure. but we can agree that yeah. housing prices in New York are hurting people. Your your people are being hurt by housing prices but, so the, going the, up. The question is in, Why does in, an influx of immigrants make prices go down? No, it makes them go up. The, the question is in, Do you know that? in my state, 1% of the population makes 45% more than the bottom 99%. That's not immigrants. Uh, we have more millionaires and billionaires that came out of the recession than before. That's not immigrants. Black people oh, came, into the, came into the recession with the least amount of wealth, and they lost the most. Those aren't immigrants. I, this that's year, true. 
We're going to. No, I, I well, you're, but you're absolutely right. Yeah. And I, I actually think that's a huge problem. But let me ask you this. Who supports mass immigration more? Poor black Americans or rich people on the Upper East Side of New York? I know the answer. Let me blow your mind and tell you the rich people support it more because they get cheap housekeepers out of it. And the people in your district who were born in this country see it as a threat to them because it is a threat to them. No, but generally, and you're not representing them if you don't recognize speaking, that. The people who support the ripping up of the families and the child attention centers are doing it because they're saying their life is made worse. But who's making their life worse? is not immigrants. And so the 33,000 Americans who are going to be shot and killed uh, this year are not immigrants. They are Americans. And so what my question is, why are we spending more on ICE than any other federal enforcement agency combined well, okay, to do okay, this? Okay, but we're arguing apples and oranges. I, sure. I'm just We're almost out of time, but really quick, can you name a specific way that flooding East Flatbush with immigrants, poor immigrants, will make the lives of your people, the people who live in your neighborhood better, the Americans, Listen, how would it improve I, their lives? Just I'm running one for one. lieutenant governor. The current lieutenant governor uh, has said that she would turn people over to ICE. And so she kind of leans toward you when it comes to immigration. Uh, but my <laughs> fundamental point here is okay. that we are spending oh, overwhelming force, draconian money, on something that is akin to graffiti. Right. No, I get it. And, you, but it's important. You don't like it, but you can't. You can't because, tell me how bringing these people in helps matter. Americans I, I, because I, we both know it I doesn't. I always it congratulate you well, on your conflation you of, of issues. It's great. Right. You shouldn't stop. But it's just I'm not, not. I'm not it's just not the anything. issue at hand. I'm asking the basic question. Me We're too. out of time, unfortunately. Thank you. Thanks for having Councilman me, Councilman Williams. Thank you. Brandon Judd is the president of the National Border Patrol Council, and he joins us tonight. Mr. Judd, thank you for coming on. So first, I've got to ask you how at the end of this week, when you and people like you have been compared to Nazis on CNN and MSNBC all week, what's your reaction to that? How does that make you feel? How does it make the guys you work with feel? What's morale like after a week like this? Well, first off, I'm absolutely disgusted that somebody would compare ICE agents, Border Patrol agents, CBP officers um, to Nazis who actually murdered people. What we're doing is we're enforcing the law in a very humane way. We're doing it uh, the way Congress asked us to do it, and we're doing it in an, in an effort to protect this country and to protect those citizens in the United States. Look, I've met with the angel moms. I'm grateful that President Trump met with the angel moms today, and to hear their stories and to find out how how horrible that they feel because they're really ripped apart um, is is pathetic to think that people in our own country would disparage their law enforcement officers and agents that are only trying to help them so you're seeing Democrats running for office in this fall's midterm elections we interviewed one of them last night running on abolishing ice because they say the agency is immoral. How do you respond to that? Notice how they don't use facts. Uh, you know, your last get, guest, he said that ICE is the, the highest funded um, law enforcement organization in the, in the federal government. That's absolutely false. ICE is actually a very small well, organization. I'm aware. Um, the United yes. States Border Patrol is much larger than ICE. Uh, CBP is much larger than ICE. But what they do is they, they don't use facts. They use rhetoric. And they're trying to scare people. Uh, and the facts, when, when we let all of the dust settle, when we actually find out what the facts are, people come back and say, wow, I was duped. After this week is over, after all of this, uh, this outcry of what's going on, once this week is over and everything, the, the waters are less muddy and people take a look back and see what was really happening, they're going to say, I was duped, and they're going to come right back to the Republicans and thank goodness they're going to. Very quickly, since the left is now calling for the abolition of ICE, what do you think would happen if ICE were eliminated? <laughs> You'd have... If ICE were eliminated, we would never be able to go after the criminal aliens that are currently here in the United States. We're talking about rapists. We're talking about murderers. We're talking about people that, that commit DUI and then kill people, manslaughter, homicide, negligent homicide. We're talking about all kinds of different crimes. And without ICE, we would not be able to go after these individuals and we would have a less safe country. We just can't have it. It's terrifying. Brandon Judd, thank you very much. Thank you.